Mako Ayamatsu, usually referred to as just Mako, was a Japanese-American character and voice actor born 1933 in Kobe, Japan. He was nominated the Academy Award of Best Supporting Actor for his role as Bohan in the 1966 film The Sand Pebbles, his fourth ever film and second credited performance. Mako went on to build a long list of performances and accomplishments during his career, co-founding the East West Players, the first Asian-American theatre company, and starring in iconic movies and TV shows from the 60s all the way to the mid 2000s. Marco passed away in 2006 at the age of 72 due to esophageal cancer after an impressive career in the entertainment industry. I assume most of my generation will remember Mako best as the voice of the iconic Uncle Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know of Mako until a while after finishing Avatar, which is around 6 months ago now. I'm not really the kind of person to go in depth about voice actors, but that's exactly the reason I'm making this video and I'll return to that later. First, let's talk a little bit about the character of Uncle Iroh. The warm, wise, often hilarious but secretly tragic character of the older brother of Fire Lord Ozai and uncle of Prince Zuko often finds a place as the favorite character of many Avatar fans, the more mature side of the fanbase at least. Iroh's wisdoms and lines are extremely quotable and have so much intricate depth to them, especially once the character builds up during the course of the series and the viewer is given more background about his past life. One of the most beautiful and simultaneously heartbreaking scenes in all of Avatar comes from The Tales of Ba Sing Se, the 14th episode of the second season. This episode and scene has been talked about so much in the past that I'm just going to give a brief synopsis of it. There are so many great videos going in depth about it that you should absolutely check out if you haven't already. The scene in question shows Iroh walking up to a tree in Ba Sing Se after spending a day in the city encountering various situations and people, all essentially resulting in him giving people insightful and fatherly life lessons and advice. Iroh sets up an altar next to the tree with a painting of his son Lu Ten, who passed away in the siege of Ba Sing Se. This isn't the first time we hear about Iroh's son, but in this scene we truly understand the gravity of Iroh's pain and it gives his character a significant amount of emotional depth. Iroh proceeds to sing a song known as Leaves from the Vine, a short tune about the fragility of men that get sent out into war, winding up in tears as he still grieves the loss of his own little soldier boy years later on Luton's birthday. Leaves from the Vine, sung by Marco, is an amazingly emotional performance, considered by the fanbase to be one of his greatest performances on the show. Depicting pain and sorrow in a very convincing way, hearing the backstory of the man behind the voice adds an entirely new layer to the scene. There's a misconception within the fanbase that Marco himself wrote the song, but in fact, in an interview with Avatar composer Jeremy Zuckerman, he tells that Mike wrote the lyrics and sent them over, and Jeremy me then compose the instrumentals. Esophageal cancer is an aggressive form of cancer that doesn't produce many serious symptoms in its early stages. Thus, it often goes undetected until the tumor is at an advanced stage, which leads to most patients passing away within the first year after diagnosis. This portion of the essay is probably the most difficult one to write because I can't find any reliable information about Marco's personal battle with cancer. I can't find anything about when he was diagnosed, whether or not he had a long battle or if he was aware of his disease early on. I honestly went into this expecting to write a lot more about the late Marco what Avatar as a series might have meant to him as one of his final projects, what Uncle Iroh could have meant to him, what Leaf from the Vine could have meant to him, but I now realize that I can't do that since I don't want to make baseless assumptions and there's no reliable information that I can find on the subject. So instead of making up baseless bullshit, essentially, I'm just gonna be respectful and move on with the actual point of this essay. As I previously mentioned, I hadn't heard of Marco until pretty recently. To add to that, I also had no clue that the voice actor of Iroh actually changed in the third season of the show. Marco passed away before he could record anything for the final season, 
and Greg Baldwin was cast to replace Marco after his passing. Baldwin has actually substituted Marco in other roles as well since he's extremely good at recreating his voices. Here are a couple of clips from interviews with Baldwin telling a little bit about how he learned his impersonation of Marco and a heartwarming story about meeting Marco's daughter and grandson. I never met Mako. I, I know of Mako's work because he was in a musical that I loved. I've always loved musicals since I was a child. He was in a musical called Pacific Overtures in 1977. And I listened to this again and again and again so that when he sadly passed away, I had literally been doing a Mako impression for 30 years. That being said, I never met him. I did meet his daughter and his grandson, who was also named Mako. They came to a uh, taping of Santa Maria Jack one day, and I didn't know they were coming, and that was that was pretty freaky. Because it's one thing to do the voice of the legendary actor Mako. You know, everybody knows Mako, everybody loves Mako, but his daughter and his grandson really literally loved Marco. I'm doing the voice of this woman's father who's no longer with us. And that was, yeah, I wanted to get that right. I, I wanted her, and she, she did. She gave me a hug afterwards and she said it was like he was in the room. And of all the things I've ever done professionally, that day mattered the most. And you know, Marco was such a great actor. I love all his roles. <laughs> And yeah, just um, you know, him in that musical is also good. well. You know, that's the, that, that's the wonderful, you know, and it's actually has helped me because I knew that I was stepping into some some shoes that are impossibly <laughs> large for me to fill, mm -hmm. and it has it has served me well, I think, to let people know at the very outset, you know, you're not Mako, mm -hmm. and I will say, well, no, of course I'm not Mako. Mako was nominated for Academy Award for Sand Pebbles. Mako was nominated for Tony Award. Mako started the first Asian American theater company in the United States. There's no way I'm Mako. Mm -hmm. But I know Mako, and I have nothing but respect for the things he did, and so I will try my best to do my job, mm -hmm. which is to keep these characters going, because he's no longer here yeah. to, to, to voice them for us. Mm -hmm. Here's what Greg had to say about Lise from the Vine. I'm often asked to sing Lise from the Vine at Comic Cons. Out of deep respect for Marco Aematsu, it's one fan request I always decline. It's Marco's song, not mine. For the avid Avatar fan, all of this might just be old news. Marco's legacy is highly respected in the community and it's obviously no secret that Baldwin replaced him in the third season. Iroh's story from Tales of Basing Se literally ends with an in honor of Marco message. The character of Marco in Legend of Korra is named after Mako Aomatsu. But the reason I'm making this short video essay is because I didn't know. I didn't realize that message was about the voice actor. I didn't know Mako from Korra was a tribute to a voice actor from The Last Airbender. I didn't notice a difference in Iroh's voice in season 3. Baldwin quite frankly did an amazing job at filling his shoes. Here's what Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, had to say about him at a San Diego Comic Con circuit 2012 after a fan asked about some memories working on the show. played my father or my uncle I think three or four times in my career and it's kind of been like a you know a mentor and uh, just an older actor that I've always looked up to and he's always looked down for me and so after he passed it kind of happened suddenly um, the next episode we did another voice actor came in and matched his voice and he was in the booth and when he started talking he was like Michael just passed and his voice is coming through the headphones and it was me and everyone in the room was like it was so eerily and silent but also it just Respect for you know a man that you love and, and his memory and, and just I'm honored to be on his last project. One of my favorite teachers from years ago used to say that if one person in the class has to raise their hand up because they didn't get the information or they didn't hear it, then someone else in the class didn't either. With the surge of new and returning Avatar fans recently, I just wanted to, I guess, kind of shine a light on the legacy of Marco. Granted, my light is rather small at the moment, but once I heard about Marco, I got really interested, wanted to know a little more about him, but it was rather hard to find 
A couple of Avatar related video essays mentioned him briefly but didn't really go in depth and obviously there are like compilations and tributes on YouTube of him but that's kind of it. Ultimately I just wanted to make this video because I was searching for something like this and couldn't find it so yeah and I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun writing the script, doing the research, picking out the clips, sorting them out in the editing program and this this voiceover part is probably, probably my least favorite part about all of it because I'd actually already recorded this entire voiceover that you're hearing right now but it just sounded terrible so yeah I have to do it again but yeah I had a lot of fun I know this channel has been just guitar videos essentially so this will probably come out of nowhere for all whopping 50 of my subscribers but yeah I'm looking forward to doing something similar in the future this is far more rewarding and fun than just making minute long guitar covers or original tunes or whatnot so yeah I guess that's it bye